Hello, welcome to Venice Bike Social. I'm Michael Mann and this is the 2020 Yamaha Tricity 300. Did you know that you can ride this on just a car license? So we've got a two part video coming up. First of all, we've got some riders who are a little bit more inexperienced. We're gonna let them loose on this. Uh, but we've also got a full and proper review from uh, experienced road tester, Steve Rose. Stay tuned. So we're here in a disused car park to ask four people with different levels of experience to give it a whirl and to see actually if that's, if that's something that would uh, interest them and uh, if this bike gives them the confidence enough to, to get out there and do some filtering. So in order, we've got Claire on the end, our least experienced rider. Claire, you've not ridden before, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, never ridden a bike in my life. But you've, have you ever been on a bike? Motorbike? Um, motorcycle, push bike. Scooter? Nope, only a push bike. Um, been on the back of a scooter and clung on for dear life when I was probably in my teens. Mm. But yeah, never ridden one myself on my own. All right, but you ride a bicycle, don't you? Yes, ride so a road bike regularly, yeah. That's good, because that gives you the confidence already in terms of balance, in terms of you know, perception of the vehicles, stuff like that. That's good. Are you excited about riding something like this? I am, yeah. Yeah, really looking forward to having a go. A little bit nervous. I think it gives you that reassurance that there's three wheels, not two. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to it. Where do your nerves lie? What do you what are you worried about? Um, I think for me, it's starting, stopping, and cornering because it's such a big, heavy-looking bike. That's kind of where I'm a bit nervous at. But yeah, it'd be great. Let's give it a go. See how it rides. Good. That's the spirit, Steve. You're next up. You've uh, you've done a bit of riding already, haven't you? Yeah. So just um, kind of when I've been away on holiday, just uh, had a moped to explore the uh, islands and stuff like that, and. I uh, did my CBT on, a, on both a geared bike and on a moped just to, just to have a go really, just yeah. to, see, to see what recently. it's like. Um, yeah, relatively recently, in the last four or five years. Yeah. I can't remember now exactly when it was, but um, yeah, in the last few, sort of, as I say, four to five years I've done that. And yeah, that's pretty much my experience. What do you reckon about three wheels on your wagon? Yeah, I mean, uh, probably similar to Clary, it's quite a big old beast and uh, that kind of gives you a bit of bit of anxiety compared you know you put it against a little moped it's probably almost looks it's kind of like twice the size mm. but uh, we're going to build you up slowly today we've got a 50cc scooter here as well just to get you used to a twist and go and yeah. momentum uh, before we stick you on this yeah no it'd be good, definitely good to get back on on the bike it's yeah. good fun good stuff all right Gavin you've got your full license right yes but you don't use it that much you sort of a born again biker so to speak yeah I had a uh, CBF 600 about 12 14 years ago, used it for about a couple of years, then fell out of love with biking, um, kids took over. Um, but yeah, recently got, a, got myself a PCX 125, which having great fun on it, getting back into biking, just being out on the open road by myself, yeah, having fun. So that was instead of what, using the car for your commute? Yes, yeah, that is the plan, yeah. And yeah, what I is it, how, far away, how so, far away are you? Uh, four or five miles away from work, so. Oh, right. Yeah, and what, do you, what about if you were to upgrade, is this something you, you would look at? It's definitely something I'm interested in having a go on. Um, like the guys have said, the size of it I was surprised at. I mean, I've had a CBF 600 and it feels, looking at it and just sitting on it, it just feels bigger. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see how the two wheels cope with the corners and the leans and that. Yeah, really looking forward to having a go. Good stuff. Steve, you've ridden this, um, you've done plenty of miles on this already. It's your test bike. You did the launch already. You're an experienced rider in all sorts of weathers and years and, and sizes and models. But as a, as, a, as a machine that, like we've already said, legally can be ridden by just a, a car license, is, something, is that something that we, we should advocate? Uh, we'll find out, I think, in a, in a few minutes time. I'm not going to say too much at this point about what I think of it because I don't want to influence everybody else. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I've been riding 37 years. I ride every day pretty much. Um, I'm sort of the opposite to Gavin. Gavin commutes four miles a day. My commute is 157 miles. Um, and I, I came up this morning on that, 157 miles. So that's kind of, I guess that does give you some indication. Uh, I think it's really interesting that you can ride something like this on a car license. Um, I'll be fascinated to see what the, what the other people think about it. Really. Good stuff, let's go then. How about it?
but once you get used to the turning and the leaning, it's really good fun. More powerful than the P625 that I usually ride on. You can feel that straight away, but good turning, especially weaving in between the bollards. But yeah, good fun. That's good. I don't. I think um, once you actually get going, you, you don't really know that it's got two wheels on the front. You don't. You know. You kind of ride it like you would ride in a normal bike. You don't think, oh, it's going to be. Um, you've got to do anything different. So yes, yeah, it was good fun. I think there was a bit hesitant before I went on there because it is quite big. But I think because I've not ridden loads and loads of different bikes, then you know I don't have it much to compare it to other than a small sort of 49 or 125cc moped but yeah good. So nervous, especially given the other guy saying it handled so differently. But for someone that's not ridden a bike before, it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, you can definitely feel the difference with weight, but it, it, you actually feel more comfortable with it being that little bit bigger, which is the total opposite of what I thought it would be like. It handles really well, and actually, it's quite fun going around the corners, and um, it's definitely a little bit more. Like you can have a lot more fun with it. Um, definitely go on a few road trips with it. It'd be great. It'd be great fun. Well, there we have it. All the action done and dusted. Unfortunately, we've lost Gavin. He's had to attend to an urgent spreadsheet or two. But uh, Claire, Steve, how was that for you guys? Well, good. Let's start with you, Claire. You had. Uh, I could see the smile on your face as you were doing <laughs> lap after lap, getting faster and faster. And you could almost yeah. see your confidence growing. Is that is that how you felt? Yeah, it was great actually. You you almost forget that you're on a three wheel bike, um, so though it feels quite heavy and a bit much bigger than the little um, the little ones we were on earlier. That's a good point. Actually, let's start with the start yeah. start at the start. So you had a 50 cc to begin with, didn't you? You had to go on the twist and go, yeah. nice and light, and it just yeah. gave you that. Yeah, yeah the ability to get going. I just to get going. To say I've never been on a bike before, so it's good just to get the feel of you know, taking your feet off the ground and getting used to just being on two wheels and not panicking and just settling in and relaxing. And um, yeah, that was that was really good fun, nice and light. I got us quite like, slow and then onto a little bit fast bumps, a little bit more whippy and yeah. That and, and you went up to the 125. How did you feel yeah. much difference between the two? Um, yeah, a little bit more bite. So you go a little bit more quicker, which was great for me transitioning into um, sort of a bigger bike, getting more confidence and mm -hmm. go a little bit faster. Um, and just getting used to the feel of um, sort of like balancing and leaning with the bike. So yeah, it was great fun. And there's a big difference between that 125 and the, and the weight specifically of this, of the Tricity. Uh, yeah. Obviously you've got the extra wheel. You said you didn't really feel that so much, but you, you must have felt the weight, right? Yeah, definitely feel the weight. It's definitely, although it's still a quick bike, um, you can definitely feel the weight around the corners, but you almost, it's double-edged sword, you almost feel more supported, more comfortable, more confident by knowing it's there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can definitely feel it, but it's, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. What about the balance of the bike? Did you feel as though that extra wheel gave you the, the confidence in a corner, so when you, were, you started to lean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You do feel more supported. Um, but yeah, I think I use it to the analogy of playing my sport, so I play ice hockey and I'm predominantly running around on two blades of steel. And you have to just have to trust your equipment. Mm -hmm. So coming from that sort of background, I was like, well, I know it's going to be okay, so you know, just go for it. And yeah, you do feel very safe on it. The physics, that's the, yeah. that's the combination, isn't it, between the two. Steve, what about you? So you're starting back on the 50, you've been, it's been a while since you've ridden a 50, right? Yeah, well, any so, kind of scooter. Yeah, I think, again, probably just like Claire, even though I've ridden in the past, it's been a few years, and it's just, just, just that little confidence boost, just, just to get going again on the little 50cc. And at the time it felt like, you know, you're going quite quick. And then similar to Claire sort of transition then onto the uh, 125 and actually then going on the 125, you sort of think actually when I was on the 50cc, you, you were looking for that bit more and there just wasn't enough on that. So the 125, um, I found my feet a bit more and that gave me the sort of confidence then yeah. to move on to this one. More power tends to give you that more confidence, doesn't it? it yeah, definitely. Be, it makes it easier to I don't know, get out of trouble as well. If you're on the road and you go for a little gap and yeah, overtake, yeah, you, uh, 
you, you, you've got that extra bit of power. Yeah, you can certainly see by putting your hand on the throttle that it did have that go in it. And same as this, when you got onto this, you could see that you know you could you would go in when you put your put your hand down, not your foot down. <laughs> you could, uh, yeah, you certainly had that power. What about the size of it? Is it overwhelming? Does it, you know, yeah, when you sat on it for the first time? Definitely, when I, like, like I said earlier, when you first see it and, you know, you see it in the pictures and that, compared to a 50cc or whatever, mm. it's quite overwhelming. But then when you get on it, I think um, it's, not, it's not as bad as you think. And even though it's got two wheels, when you're actually on it, you can't see the two wheels. You, and it, you don't really feel that there's two wheels there. You don't, you don't really ride it any differently to a... Um, to having just the one wheel yeah. at the front and yeah it does feel heavier i think you do feel that you definitely feel that it's, it's quite a beast isn't it what about the first time you went into a corner the first time you tried to steer it or lean yeah, it yeah i didn't know what to do really i didn't know whether to um ride it any differently to to the bike i rode you know the 125 previously but then um going down was going quite slow but because you're going so slow you can you can go slow and feel still that you've got the balance because of the extra wheel. So if you own one of these bikes, you've got a lot of storage space with the top box on this particular bike, on the under the seat, you've got a, a, an enormous great uh, fuel range on this. Is that, are, these, are those, for you, really quite a question for you both, are those the kind of things you'd be looking for if you were interested in swapping a car for a scooter on a, on a commute? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, um, if I was looking for a scooter, it'd need to, you know, you need to carry your laptop and stuff like that. So you need some storage for that and, and probably to put your helmet in when, when you're at work. but. Yeah, good storage space, probably a bit more than I'd need myself. Yeah. 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 What about you, yeah, definitely. I think it's great. It's got great storage. And if, say, if it was a little if a commuter bike or even going that little bit further on, like a little weekend away, it'd be perfect. Cause it's got a lot of storage. Um, it's great to look at as well. It's comfortable. So, yeah, I think it'd be, it'd be perfect. Good. All right. Well, glad you've enjoyed it. Glad it's been a, a worthwhile exercise and it's a good experience for you both. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut to uh, Mr. Steve Rose. He's a seasoned professional. He's done the launch of this, the press launch of the Tristy 300 recently. He's put five or 600 miles on since. He does a lot of commuting. He rides in all weathers. Let's see what he's got to say about it. Okay, so we've had the opinions of those guys who've uh, just ridden the bike for the first time. Steve, you've done the press launch. You've had this particular bike from the Yamaha test fleet for a while now, and you've done, what, five, 600 miles already? Yeah, something like that. Um, the launch, like all press launches, was, was interesting enjoyable um, you you never quite get to do enough miles and you you're you're often left with more questions than answers um, so it's really good to get a, a test bike from Yamaha just spend a couple of weeks doing doing what we would do with it if it was ours so I spent a day riding around central London on, on it just to see what it's like for yeah um, uh, and today I rode 160 miles from my house to here just to see what it's like if you do want to do a long journey on it um, we've done loads of just whizzing around town and just, just trying to answer those questions that you come away with. There's a lot of questions with a bike like this because it's not a conventional motorbike. You've ticked all those boxes so far. I said, how a terrible phrase, <laughs> ticking the boxes. You almost, I bet you're, you're, you're going to go home tonight and hope that it rains, aren't you? So well, you can just do a thorough I, test. I hate to say this, but one of the reasons why I went to London on it, when I went to London, was it was absolutely hammering it down. It was chucking it down that day. And I looked at it and thought, you know, this is, this is my chance because the, the whole point of this three wheel system is that you get extra grip, you get extra confidence when, you know, in kind of bad weather, bumpy roads. So, you know, as a, as a road tester, it's my kind of professional duty. To, You've got to go and find all the manhole covers. <laughs> yeah. And, and so riding around central London for a day in torrential rain was really interesting for, for two reasons. One, because it did show up how good that system is. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really confident, you know, wet roundabouts, greasy roundabouts, those kind of things where, where there's a wet manhole cover that you can't miss. But in here, you're missing it with one wheel and hitting it with the other wheel. And, and, and so you, 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 know, you get that, just that extra confidence. The other interesting thing was, that surprised me a little bit was there's a lot of body work on that bike. And this one's got the optional higher screen on it. And I was disappointed by the weather protection. Um, for, to say how much body work there is on it, I got very wet. Oh, well, my... Pesky motorcycles. Pesky motorcycles. Uh, my clothing got very wet. I was dry underneath, but... Um, yeah, it's surprising just how how unaffected the bodywork was. Um, it, it does a good job of covering up a lot of the technology that's in there, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of technology underneath it. Uh, you know, and it was. I mean, it was absolutely chucking it down. That's why I went there. But yeah, but interesting. The front end is great. Um, in, in in a way, it's a bit like the Nikon in that it it shows up how 
how less great the back end is and the back end certainly you can adjust the preload on it and I haven't done that yet and I probably weigh more than the average um, person that's just, just it's designed for um, but yeah it was, it was really yeah really interesting so the suspension and, the, and those front fork front wheels work independently no they they What's there's the two, system called? I can't remember. No. <laughs> there's, there's, there's two, we'll, we'll caption it underneath. There's, there's two linkages under there, and when you, lift, when you lift the front wheels completely off the ground, it's like featherweight to touch. And oh. so, um, it, so you've got the suspension and the steering are, are completely separate, separated. It's, really, it's a really light system to use, a really easy system to use. It steers beautifully. Um, it does add a bit of weight, um, but and also, what's, in, what's also interesting is it's got two small wheels at the front and discs behind them and shrouds behind the discs. Um, so it limits the kind of security you can use. You've got to, you, having bought one, you need to choose your security carefully. And it may be existing bike security you've got won't work with it. In terms of disc locks or...? or yeah, a standard disc lock, for example, doesn't work. Yeah. Um, uh, U-lock does, and you find a way. But it's just one of the, again, it's one of the, the first time you go out on it with your trusty disc lock, you think, oh, okay. Uh, when you upgrade from two to three wheels, <laughs> you need extra security. Yeah. Um, but the, the, so it's the USP is, is those two wheels at the front, isn't it? So it's yeah. all about what, cornering confidence? Yeah, and also it's to do with the distance that those two wheels are apart. Because the, the key thing we were talking about earlier in the, the, with the other guys, it, the front wheels, if the front wheels are more than 460 millimetres apart, it legally it classes as a tricycle. And therefore you can ride it on a car licence. And... And, and, and that's important because, you know, because the Nike and Yamaha's other three-wheeler, um, the wheels aren't that far apart, so you can't ride that on a car license. Um, it, it's, and it's a really interesting, having now ridden it for sort of five, six hundred miles, I, I'm now, I, the, the best way to, for me to think about it is, yes, you can ride it on a car license without any training. Uh, you could just walk, you know, ride out of a Yamaha dealership and off you go. In the same way as you can, if you go skiing, you can go to the top of a mountain with a pair of skis and ski down the first red run that you see. Um, I wouldn't advise it. Having never skied before. <laughs> having never yeah. skied before. Or you can jump on a horse, having never been on a horse before. <laughs> and perfectly legal for you to go and do whatever you like. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't advise that either. Um, and this is the same, really. You can ride one of these without any training on a car license. You might struggle to find an insurer who will insure you to do it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, this is this is a motorcycle that will do 85 to 90 miles an hour. It weighs 230, 240 kilograms. Um, you know, it's quite tall. It's quite wide. Um, it, you know, it takes like, it takes some time. It took me as an experienced rider. It took me some time to get used to where the weight sits, how it balances. Yeah. You know, how, just when you come to a stop, just how it all feels. If you'd never ridden a bike before. Um, you know, you would be really unnerved by it, I think. You know, there's just how the traffic works, how, the, how much quicker you are than the rest of the traffic, where you're supposed to be. Um, th there's a whole lot of stuff about riding a motorbike in traffic that takes some time to get used to. And, and CBT, you know, is as simple as it is, you know, at least gives you that basic idea of how to move a bike about, how a bike feels, how to stop, how to ride, you know, in a controlled environment, and then a little bit of road training. It, it feels like CBT is a minimum. That's our recommendation. Yeah. But what about, um, you talk about filtering, is it, is it wider than your average motorcycle? Does it, does it make filtering a little bit trickier? It's not a lot wider. It's about, I think in terms of dimensions, it's about three centimetres wider than the, than the two-wheel version, um, which I think is the X-Max 300. What you do notice though, because the body works so wide, um, when you're doing that kind of, when you're actually kind of wiggling through traffic with the handlebars, it's not quite as easy to do that. There, there are gaps every now and then. When, when I was riding through London, um, on the, the kind of the Westway into Hammersmith, which used to be a really nice wide road and is now a much narrower road than it was. And all, and all the cars have got wider because everyone drives SUVs and white vans now. <laughs> so there were, there were two points on that trip where I got stuck. And I can't remember the last time I got stuck on a bike when I was trying to filter. And, and in my defense, there was also a guy on a, a Vespa GTS who got stuck at the same time. And there was a guy riding an NC 750 who also, so that's, that's partly a measure of how narrow the road was and how small the gaps were. But you do get stuck. Having said that, you can filter through pretty much anything on, a, on that that you can do on a normal bike. Is the weight detrimental to that? Like, do you feel, so when you are at slow, uh, slow at filtering pace in a, in a city, let's say, what's that, 10 miles, 15 miles an hour maybe, do you feel that weight? No, not particularly. It's, um, in fact, I'd say it's almost, it's almost the opposite. The slower you go, the bigger benefit you feel from the two wheels at front. You, you get extra stability from those wheels. 
So at walking pace, you actually, you feel like you could pretty much slow down to a stop and not have to put your feet down. It's really confident at low speed. Um, the Tristy 125, which is much lighter than that, has, is even more pronounced. In fact, you really do feel you could just sit at a standstill on that. Um, this is, is not quite as confident as the 125, but it's much more confident than, than a normal scooter. You know, because again, with small wheels, and you know, sometimes you, you don't always feel as confident yeah. as you might do. But it has a locking system, doesn't it? So when you come to a stance, I say lock yes. in inverted commas. It doesn't. It's not rigid, is it? No. It gives you a. It gives you a degree of. Well, there's a button, isn't there? So it, it gives you an alert at, at, at a certain yeah. when you're decelerating. Yeah. As you get below um, six miles an hour, I think it is. A light flashes on the dash, and there's a, a button on the switch gear which you flick that, and it, it basically locks the front end it, at whatever angle you have it when you press the button. So if you're going in an absolute straight line, everything's upright. You do that, it locks it, and it. It locks it via almost like another, a, like a brake disc in the front that just clamps it and, and stops it. It's not like the Piaggio and Peugeot systems. It doesn't feel rigid like they do. There's still a bit of movement in it, mm. and it takes a while to get mm. used to it. It's a bit unnerving at first, um, but once you come to trust it, it's, it works. And then you release it by you just open the throttle and it self-releases. Uh, it's got performance. It's got presumably it's got economy as well on its side. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it's. It's a. Uh, I think the engine's. 27, 28 horsepower. Um, it will do flat out um, an indicator about 90-ish, um, which is probably a real 80 miles an hour. But more importantly, it'll sit at 70 on the motorway, keep up with the traffic, a long way from the red line, still got two and a half thousand revs to the red line. And, and there's plenty of power, you know, if you need to overtake something um, that's sort of dawdling at 65, yeah. you can get past it. And it's still, it's so far, um, it's averaging the time I've had it. It's averaging in mid to late 70s mpg. Okay. Um, so not as good as a 125 scooter, no. obviously, but it's still hugely it's, practical. Yeah. And it got oodles of space as well, yeah. no doubt. And it's a big tank as well. I think it's a 14 litre tank on there. So it's you've got a mile. Uh, you've got a range of well over 200 miles. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's really good. Oh, so you got up here and uh, from your house to here, no problem. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, and loads of room under the seat. Room for um, you can get two helmets under there. You can get yeah, I say you can get a a kind of an A4 size briefcase under there. You have to, like a lot of scooters, you have to wiggle your helmet a bit to find which way round and which way up it works best. A briefcase? <laughs> no, yeah. Who uses a briefcase? <laughs> Surely everybody who has one of these uses a briefcase. Uh, I don't know. It's a man bag. You can get an A4, you can get an A4 man bag and satchel. Um, Go on, what other technologies on there? It's got, um, it's not, key, I mean, it's keyless, isn't it? Yes, it's got keyless, keyless ignition. Um, and it's got ABS and a kind of rudimentary traction control. Um, again, when we did the launch and you got a bunch of excitable journalists riding around Northamptonshire on it, um, you know, they were talking about how the traction control works. I, I was riding over wet white lines last week in London and it was barely coming on because, because it didn't need to, not because it's not working, but because the power delivery is really consistent, it's really smooth, it's a very easy bike to ride. You've got to be very aggressive and really, you, unless you're riding on ice probably, you've got to be wanting to trigger the traction control to make it work. But it is there as a backup and that's the point, it's a, it's a safety system. You talk about riding comfort earlier on and or, 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 or in terms of lack of weather protection and the extremes, but um, but what about the seat, what about the saddle, what about uh, you sort of, uh, the way in which you sit, the reach of the handlebars, the width, That's all really good, length. it's really, I say I came up this morning from, um, from, from my house just outside Brighton, um, it's 160 miles near enough to here, it took me two and a half hours on the road, very comfortable, very easy, um, I've ridden other big scooters on that journey and and you tend to find with scooters that whilst they're really comfy in town, on a long journey, they tend to just get you at the small of your back. And, and this didn't, this was really... Do you know, there's not, there's not many other motorcycles or, or in fact large scooters that would do that journey any faster, would they? Or even no. in any more comfort? No, well I've done it, you know, I do that journey, as you know, <laughs> yeah. far too regularly. And I've done it on everything from, the, the other bike, in my, uh, the test bike I've got at the moment is a Panigale V4S. <laughs> um, one extreme. Yeah, and you know, and I did it in the winter on Africa Twins and also I do and and I, you tend to find because of the nature of the traffic as much as anything else, it takes two and a half hours pretty much whatever you're riding. The only difference is that some of them do some of them take two and a half hours and do forty to the gallon and some take two and a half hours and do seventy to the gallon. <laughs> and you know, for that journey, um, you know, you kind of choose the right bike. So on the assumption we've now convinced uh, all of the car drivers and all of those people who used to uh, commute uh, on those god-awful buses and trains. Uh, assuming we've, we've, we've convinced them now that a Tristy 300 is, is the way forward, what, uh, what'll it cost? 
Um, list price, by the time you actually ride out the dealership, um, with no doubt with at least one small accessory on it, is about eight grand. Um, and the, the current sort of PCP deal, I think the MR, the, obviously the PCP, they can adjust it to whatever deposit, whatever, you, you know, they can be very flexible. Typical deal is around 1,500 quid deposit, and I think it's 79 quid a month um, over three years. Which when you consider, uh, again, you know, if you consider the cost of, of even just parking at a train station, wow. never mind your season ticket, mm. you'd probably spend that on parking most months. Um, so, for, you know, it's, it's, in, terms of, in terms of cost, it's an absolute no-brainer, you're crazy nuts. Even um, if it's just a CBT as well and not the full licence. Yeah, and I think for most people, most people who, who did a CBT and then just spent a bit of time just getting used to it, you know, go to, like we did this morning, go to an empty car park somewhere and just practice yeah. starting, stopping, getting your feet down, just get comfortable with how it feels at low speed. It wouldn't be long before you were comfortable with it. Do you think many people would? If they, we've seen it already with the examples we had this morning with Claire and Steve and Gavin. They've, they seem to get confident quickly on that yeah. in terms of, of, of handling the weight and getting into a corner. And you could, thankfully, they had open face helmets. We could see them beaming. <laughs> but they, um, they didn't seem to be hanging about, did they? They, they, no. they got it and they, they were straight away. And they, they both kind of gave it a bit of a glowing reference, albeit they were a little concerned about the weight and, and its physical size. That really, that's the only thing that can against it, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think, yeah, for those people who've never ridden before, that would be the thing that would be slightly intimidating at first. But you do get used to it. And I think, yeah. to be fair, I, I, in, the conclusion I've come to as I've been riding it is I think the, the ideal customer for this actually, rather than being that brand new rider, the ideal customer is probably someone who's, who did their CBT a couple of years ago, has been riding a 125cc scooter, wants something a little bit bigger but doesn't want to do their test. Um, but has already got a car license. And so they've got that couple of years of experience of just being in traffic and riding a bike and knowing how it all works. And this is a way for them to be able to upgrade, get a bigger, faster, you know, more comfortable, luxurious bike without having to go through the rigmarole of doing a, a full motorcycle test. And that, to me, that seems to be the really kind of obvious candidate for this. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Steve. No, thank you. So we've had the opinions of uh, two and a half. <laughs> Uh, relatively inexperienced riders. We've had the experience of, of Steve here as well, um, his opinion. Uh, bottom line is that you know, legally you can go out uh, and if you've, you've just got a car license and you're over 21, is that right? Yeah. Over 21, you can go and buy one of these and go and take it out on the road. Let us know your opinion on that fact or whether you, sh you think that people should actually have their CBT. Give us your opinion on the bike if you've ridden it or if you haven't or if you've ridden anything else with three wheels. Um, you can comment on the... Uh, in the bits below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And um, thanks very much for joining us. See you again soon. I'm likely to get physical, physical, I'm literally, I'm likely to get physical with my hands. I do like to talk with my hands a little bit. Right. On a bike or a scooter before to, uh, to be let loose. Oh, box! I'm normally really good at these. Thanks very much for joining us. See you again soon. Oh, look at that Q Starbucks cup out of <laughs> shot. It was exit stage left. <laughs>